I'm Brian Vest, and uh, I'm going to move a mountain, and all I have is a spoon. And I'd like you to come join me and move a mountain, because we're going to move it. In this episode, we're sailing from Isla Mujeres, Mexico to Florida to meet up with a man who has taken on a seemingly impossible task in the Florida Keys. In 2017, Hurricane Irma struck the Florida Keys, causing widespread devastation. Homes were destroyed and lives were upended. And one very remarkable story unfolded, one that showcased the power of unwavering belief. A man embarked on an extraordinary mission, assembling an army of volunteers to restore the beauty that was lost. And we can't wait to meet this legend. But before, we need to sail for three days. Watermelon contest. Watermelon contest? Yes. Is that why you're wearing my shirt? Yes. And what rule it should be, it must be very messy. <laughs> Okay, one, <laughs> two, three. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> what? I think I lost. I think so. <laughs> After three days of sailing, we have arrived at the Florida Keys. It's a stunning chain of islands off the southern tip of Florida. All of the islands are connected by the iconic overseas highway, spanning 120 miles with its series of bridges and causeways. Head. I'm ready. Dork. <laughs> I know. We're going to go meet up with a guy named Brian who's trying to clean the Florida Keys at least one time in his life. So let's go see what that's about. So what we're going to do today is take a boat ride. We're right here in the middle of Big Pine Key in the Florida Keys. It's beautiful. It's about 87, 88 degrees. Feels like 150. Nice yeah, it does. Uh, we're going to take a ride out and uh, show you what uh, the hurricane had did to us in uh, December uh, 2017 is when we started. So Irma hit in September 2017. Five years later, we're still pulling out trash and helping to replant mangroves out there and restore the ecosystem. Well, let's load up, huh? Yeah. The hurricane nearly destroyed Brian's home, with extensive damage to the roof and flooding throughout the house. Hurricane Irma came in at a category four when she hit. About 2,700 homes were severely damaged or destroyed, but those homes um, didn't just disappear. A lot of it is out floating in the back country, and the back country of the Florida Keys is quite large. And uh, we just decided to clean up our little neighborhood ourselves one day and uh, 25 of us got together and cleaned up and that led to a second time where 125 joined us and then a third time with 250 who joined us and it became a way for locals and tourists who wanted to see the keys come back get involved in saving the reason why we're here um, we're here for the water if there was ever a plant deserving of a superhero cape our vote would be for mangroves Mangroves are the only trees with the ability to grow in salty water, and they can even convert salt water into fresh water. Their roots, known as prop roots, 
extend above the water's surface, making it look like they live on stilts. These roots help the mangroves stay firmly anchored in the muddy and sandy soil. Mangroves are amazing at protecting the coast where they live. Their thick leaves and tangled roots create a natural shield that defends against strong winds, storms, and big waves. They're like superheroes that prevent erosion and keep the land safe and secure. They provide a safe haven for a diverse array of plants and animals. Fish, crabs, birds, and many other creatures find food, shelter, and a place to raise their young amidst the maze of mangrove roots. Did you know that mangroves can store up to five times more carbon per square foot than many other types of forests? Their ability to absorb and store carbon dioxide is truly remarkable. These superhero trees are nature's champions in the fight against climate change, helping to reduce the levels of greenhouse gases in our atmosphere and mitigate the impact of global warming. Well, you'll see it pretty soon. There's uh, a lot of dead everything. It's a big catch basin for the easterly winds that run all year long. So there's everything in here, I think even parts of an airplane, but uh, we found spaceship parts in here that floated in from French Guiana. Uh, we got buoys, trash cans, gas cans. They're all empty now because the sun's cracked them and bleeded everything out. It was sad to see how a place that used to be teeming with life is now lifeless. The garbage has been a big contributor to this exodus. In just five years, Brian has built up what he calls an army of dedicated volunteers from around the world. Today, Brian's organization is one of the largest in the U.S. with over 4,000 members. Day after day, for half a decade, Brian has been working tirelessly alongside all of these volunteers, making significant progress but recognizing that there is still a long journey ahead. We've already cleaned that one island. We've done this one, this one, this one. And there were several more that you can't see in the horizon. We've done those. But we've only done the east side, not the west side. Everything else, nothing. Well, it's at least 200 tons, maybe more. But it's, uh, it's doable. Cleaning up as much as we can. Today we're at uh, 214 tons of trash, about 2.5. Almost 2.6 million feet of trap line. Must be 10,000 buoys. About 200 traps and 89 refrigerators that are out here. And we're still finding them. Uh, they're just buried in there further. Interesting it was that a lot of people got behind this. Um, and from all over the world and all walks of life, from the very poorest to the very richest, um, are interested in saving the Florida Keys. The best part is it can be done. You can move a mountain one spoonful at a time, no matter what mountain you're going to move. While cruising around the mangrove forest, we observed a significant contrast between life and death. Dead? That's alive. Guess what happens when something's dead? Nothing happens. Yeah. But this is, uh, that's a gazillion minnows. So these are close to dropping, but that's a red mangrove propagule. Uh -huh. So when, when they're ripe, properly seasoned and ready to go, the tree will just drop them in the water and they will float for six months to a year. Just like that. For a year. Six months to a year, they'll float around until they stop. When they stop, when they get jammed in something, they will sink. Uh -huh. And as soon as they touch the ground, they know there's, they'll grow roots and grow a tree. Wow. So my goal is these, they're all about to drop. So in the next probably month or two, these are pretty quick. These are going to be floating everywhere. So yeah. we go around with nets and scoop them all up. And this little, this little cap will fall off. You take this, you stick it in some dirt. You put it in a pond, feed it salt water, and it starts growing. 
And that's what Brian started to do. He's created an environment of shallow salt water where mangroves can incubate and grow to a formidable size before being planted in the wild. Brian now has three nurseries, capable of growing up to 30,000 plants. Uh, while we come out and clean, why don't we just swing by the nursery and get a couple hundred, bring them out with us, plant them when we're finished cleaning up, and this year I'd like to do uh, 50, uh, about 80,000 this year, and next year double that, so 160 to 200,000. And I probably need, uh, for the entire Florida Keys, you know, 30 million. Does this number scare you? Not at all, not at all, because one, you know, one spoonful at a time, you can, you can move a mountain if you plant 100 mangroves every day. You know, after uh, a year or two or three, all of a sudden you look back and go, wow. And you just keep at it. You just, you just don't look up. You know, you, you make it to the end of a marathon by just not quitting. We're thankful of Brian and his unwavering dedication to creating a positive impact. As he says, you can move a mountain one spoonful at a time. We have no doubt that he has inspired so many to think about what they can do in their own backyard to make the planet a better place. Stay tuned for our next episode where we gear up to cross the Atlantic Ocean. And believe us, you won't want to miss it. <laughs>